Okay, in the time that I um, have with you, I want to say that uh, it's a privilege to be able to share not only my testimony, but the uh, gospel, which is the good news of Jesus Christ with you. I want to thank uh, Ryan for inviting me. I really want to thank uh, um, the coaches, uh, Coach Micah, Coach Lance, uh, because I really think it was providential that uh, Noah ended up here. Uh, we prayed a lot, uh, and this is the place where God set him, a place that is decidedly Christian. And I think that's going to make a difference, uh, not only in his life, but also in your lives. So what I want to talk to you um, about this morning really is uh, breadcrumbs. I know that sounds crazy, but we'll get there. Breadcrumbs and then divine moments. So the very first thing I'd like you to do is I want to make sure that we're on one accord. Uh, so I need you to do something. And please don't be that one individual that either doesn't participate or wants to stand out. This is not the time to be divergent. OK. So here's all I want you to do is when you see this hand cross this hand, I need you to try and clap in unison because if we're not on one accord, I can't move forward. Now, I have done this at other schools. Most schools can do this within a minute. Tabor, please don't disappoint. Are you ready? So when this hand crosses this hand, you somebody got it. Here we go. Ready? Come on, Coach Lance. Ready? That's pretty good. Now, with a little more emphasis, and you'll see what it does to the atmosphere. I want to thank um, the music ministry. That was, just, that was just awesome. You're blessed to have that quality of music here, whether you realize it or not. That is absolutely awesome. Y'all ready? All right, let's go so I can get into the word. Now, don't that feel good? That feels some kind of way, doesn't it? Ready? All right, let's go. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, the first thing I'm going to say is um, my testimony is one that I think is rich, but all testimonies are only worth their salt if they go back and they somehow relate to scripture. The gospel really is the good news of Jesus's life and how it touches ours. Uh, so I'm going to read this quickly. Uh, I tend to go really fast. I don't know where Noah's at, but if I start hooping and hollering and shouting, uh, jump up Noah and then tell me, Dad, this is not the place. But I'm sure it is. All right, so here it goes. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, Let me remind you, uh, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I want you to remember that. He says, I pass on to you what, ha what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Watch this. This is the good news. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture has said, just as the scriptures has said. He was buried and then he uh, was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures has said. He was seen by Peter and then by 12. And after that, he was seen by more than 5000 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, uh, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, though I have not been born, last of all, as though I had been born out of, uh, as one wrong, uh, in the wrong time, I also saw him, for I am least of all the apostles. So this is what I want us to, to uh, this is what I want us to grasp. As folks are, are, are sharing uh, their testimony, it's very important that you realize that if it's based on the scriptures, here's the thing that, that, that I stand on. History will say that Jesus, in fact, was a historical figure, even though they won't say that he's the Christ. What they argue with most of the time is his resurrection. And the resurrection has come under scrutiny uh, for the longest of times, because if Jesus, in fact, rose, then it means that he's, in fact, the savior. It gives val validity to what I'm going to call the breadcrumbs in my life, in your life, where God has stopped by in your life. Watch this, because he's been after you before you were ever even born. And so the breadcrumbs, whether you believe it or not, even led you to Tabor College. Not that all circumstances and situations, I'm not a fatalist, but I, I know this. God can direct your life to be in the place where you need to be when you need to be it. But the only thing you, we have to do is realize that these divine moments happen and it's a matter of whether we will take advantage of it or not. So here's the thing. You can be here and not be here. So what I want you to realize is as, as you're at Tabor, as you're as you're in your classes in all different disciplines, it's important that you that you say, here I am, meaning I'm in this place. But also I am here, meaning I am really present, Lord, and I want you to speak to me. So, Lord, as we go forward, please give us ears to uh, ears to hear. 
I see, here, uh, see minds that are transformed, mouths that will decree, decree, declare the goodness of the Lord, hearts that are ready to receive, and then hands and feet that will put flesh on the gospel. So here I am, I am here. So every time when you meet in chapel, before you come in, notice that you're in a place, but say, I also want to be present. Here I am, and I am here. Watch this. I want to tell you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through several stories. If I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. I, 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 want, I want to share a story with you that, that is very significant uh, because we have people in different stages of faith here. And that's an awesome thing. Uh, I, but the breadcrumb has brought you here in this moment so that God could speak to you, so that you could be equipped, so you could find out your purpose, whatever it is. So watch this. Um, uh, there's a story of a young uh, youth minister that when he took over the youth ministry program, it grew by leaps and bounds. But as time uh, went on, it, it began to fade. And so he was discouraged. And so he heard that there was a wise uh, 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 preacher that lived up in the mountains. He said, so I'm going to go and talk to him because he's going to give me some advice because I just don't understand what's going on. And so when he went up there, he couldn't find him. He was searching and searching and searching. He couldn't find him. And since I'm from the south, I'm going to tell you the southern version of it. So he said uh, he was walking by and there's a, there's a guy sitting on a porch, old guy, and, 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 and the old guy reached out and said, hey, would you like some iced tea? That's the southern version. You can put in Coke or pop or whatever on your version. But here's what happens. He said, yeah, uh, come on up here and sit down. And he had a hound dog because everybody in the south has a hound dog sitting on the porch. Uh, and he said, uh, uh, what's wrong with you, son? He says, well. I'm looking for this preacher. I can't find him. And uh, I'm just discouraged. And it seems like the church, we, we had great numbers and now we don't have great numbers. And, and I just don't get it. And the old wise guy thought about it for a minute. He said, well, son, you asking the wrong question. He said, huh? He said, you see my hound dog here? He said, yeah. He said, one, one day this big old fat rabbit came and was running he said, it was a white rabbit just going. And so my hound dog leaped up off of this porch and got behind him. And I could hear him in the briars and the bushes. But now briars and bushes, that's the stuff that, you know, that got stickies and thorns and thistles. And he said he followed them all through that. And he says, after a while, you could hear all the other hound dogs in the, in the region. They got, got on board and they just went to following. And then after a while, you could hear nobody but my hound dog behind him. You got you to like my sound effects now. He said he just, he just followed him and he said, uh, now, he said it came to a, a point where it was just my hound dog who was behind him. And he said, see, you're asking the wrong question. It isn't why all those other dogs stop. It's why did my dog stay after the white rabbit? He said, here's the reason. My dog was the only one who saw him. And so here's the deal. There's a difference when we have an encounter with God that is genuine, that, that is a, that, that, that's a moment where God picks out where he will begin to talk to us. He will begin to see us. He will begin to show us how much he loves us. So the gospel is based on a God who is chasing after you in moments of your life. Some of them seem good, some of them seem bad, but these are divine moments. They're breadcrumbs leading you to a place where you can be in a great relationship with the Lord. So watch this. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a story um, in Luke. It's called uh, The Road to Emmaus. Jesus has already been crucified and they are going back home. It's two of them that are walking on the road uh, and it's a seven mile uh, journey. Now, seven miles doesn't take us any time. But you, can you imagine seven? Uh, we call it chevaleting. Everybody know what that is? That's where you shove one foot and you lay the other. OK, so so they're walking these uh, these seven miles and, and Jesus comes a, a, alongside him. But he says he veils himself so they couldn't see it. Now, what I want you to see is here's a divine moment that, that that's a mystery. It's veiled. But Jesus is walking with them. But but until he reveals himself, he doesn't see them. And so they're walking. Uh, and Jesus says, what y'all talking about? And they said, man, are you crazy? This is the brown version. Now you can read it in scripture. It's a little different. He says, uh, what? You haven't heard about Jesus? He was mighty in miracles, a great prophet. He was crucified. I don't that trip y'all out. They talking to Jesus. This happened to him. But they keep walking and uh, Jesus begins, it says, to open up. Here's the thing. It always, got to, it always has to go back to the scriptures. He, he began to open up the scriptures to them. 
uh, starting at Moses and coming forward. Really what he was doing is showing how he was prophesied and that he fulfilled every requirement that he was in fact the savior. And so as they're walking, they get to the place seven miles now, seven miles and he didn't recognize them. So there are times in your life for which God is going to be talking with you. He, God's going to be walking with you where you may not recognize it. It's breadcrumbs leading you to a particular place that you might be in a relationship with God. So here's what happens. They get to the place where it's like a fork in the road and we come to those junctures in life where now, they have to go this way and Jesus is going to go on. So Jesus is walking. They said, no, no, no. Come. Here's what's important. Come and be with us for a little while. And that's important. God, God uh, is with you. But will you invite him to be with you just for a little while? And watch this. They were eating. Watch this in a, in a everyday, ordinary thing. They were just eating. But then Jesus broke the bread. And it was in the breaking of the bread. They're like, oh, my goodness, this was the Lord. He took something uh, ordinary that he now made special and said, let me speak to you and reveal myself. And when he revealed himself, he was gone. And they said, did not our hearts burn within while we were walking? We, we should have recognized, we should have known that this was the Lord. And so what I want to tell you is the God who created the, the universe, the God who loves you, gave his only son that he might die, that we might be forgiven of our sins, that gives us the Holy Spirit. He's a great communicator. And sometimes we have to step aside and realize that God has given us this divine moment where he will, in fact, speak to us if we will say, here I am. I am. I am here. So it's, it, 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 it's very important that we that we recognize it, that we, that we see the, the Lord's hands in the midst of what we are doing. So watch this. I want, you to, I, want, I want you to hear this. As I'm going to share my breadcrumb moments, the only reason that they're significant is because it is as the scripture has said. What is that? That Christ lived. He died and he was resurrected. He's seated on the right hand of the father. It's the resurrection that takes faith. Histor uh, history majors in here. You know that if you study, you can find out that Jesus was, in fact, a historical figure. But watch this. History, all they do to me is validate my faith. They cannot invalidate my faith because the fact that he lived, the fact that he was a, a great prophet and performed miracles, all historians do is say that he was. But for me, it's, I, I'm able to say he is the Lord. Watch this. Phil, uh, 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 ph uh, philosophy, my, 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 my philosophy uh, majors that, that want to say, well, he has a great worldview. His philosophy is one that's wonderful for the world. All you do is validate for me that the philosophy, the worldview that God gave me, that God gives us is the best way to live our lives. You cannot refute my faith. You cannot make me uh, uh, not uh, believe the Lord and the breadcrumbs he's given me along the way. What am I saying? We know that Jesus was a historical figure. There's nothing that's ever refuted that. Now, in 2021, with all the technology and all the different things they have, they never found his body. So with all that, you cannot refute my breadcrumbs because you're going to see that they line up with the fact that God has been after me like he's been after you your whole life. And so it's a matter of will we see God moving in these divine moments? I, I, I noticed that when I was a when I was a child, I didn't realize it was a breadcrumb. I, I, we had a children's Bible. Maybe you have those. And I remember I can see it now. It had an a orange cover and it had uh, different color writings. It had all the uh, Bible stories. Uh, and my mom probably read them to me or I read them. I don't even remember. But I remember when everyone would leave the house, that book would just come to my mind. And, and this, this, this awesome uh, presence. And maybe you uh, uh, feel that and you, your reaction was the same as mine. What I would do is it was so intense uh, and, and I would be alone in the house. I'd run out. I'd run outside and say, I got to find somebody to play some uh, some football, some baseball or something, because I don't know how to deal with this moment. I, I'm here, Lord, but I, 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 I but I wasn't I am here yet. I, I wasn't really exploring the moment. I hadn't I hadn't I hadn't set aside. But 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 it was a breadcrumb there where God was leading me someplace. I could I could say for a matter of fact that God was 
for stopping by. And, and even now, sometimes uh, when I'm alone, I, I still hear uh, scriptures pop up. I still see circumstances where I see God moved in my life because God was, was stopping by. Uh, when I went to uh, college before that, the reason I ended up playing basketball, is, it, it, was a, it was an outlet for me. Whenever I was angry and things were going on, I would find a basketball and I'd find a court and I would just start shooting. I, I want to rename the zone. Some folks think you're in the zone when you don't miss the basket, but it was a divine moment where, where God would stop by and watch this. I, I would feel a presence that said everything was going to, to be all right. It was God stopping by in the, in the midst of that moment. I was, I was there, but I had not yet presented and, and, and investigated the moment. So I would shoot and sometimes, y'all believe me, if somebody would go by that court, they thought I was crazy. Why? Because eh, basketball, I mean, y'all, y'all understand this, I, was, I wasn't missing. You, you understand? But at the same time, I was, I was crying and, and weeping. It wasn't because I, was, I wasn't missing a shot. It, it was the fact that somehow... I knew that there was a breadcrumb that God was, God was stopping by. And so there are these instances where, where, where you can't refute me because we can't say that he is a historical figure that, that was bodily uh, dead, that did not resurrect and now has, a, has, yes, a body, but is a spiritual being that can show up any time in any place in any circumstance. So you can't refute my, my faith. I want my faith. I want you to know that God, too, has been stopping by your, your life. And will you take a moment? And, and step aside and begin to investigate this God that's been after you, this God that created everything, who, who is God. Watch this now. When I, I played enough uh, in that circumstance that God saw fit, watch this now, to, to offer me a bunch of different avenues and, and scholarships. And what was interesting is everyone that, that, that seemed to appear uh, seemed like something would happen. The school I really wanted to go to, where some of my friends uh, from Panama went to, uh, I, I could not go to. But all of a sudden, a door, an opportunity went there. Why? Now, maybe this is none of y'all. Uh, and I'm watching my time. I'll get you out on time. I was pre-med, pre-law, and pre-ministry. They called me the pre-med. Watch this, because I was still discerning the breadcrumbs. I was, still trying to, to hear the Lord. Before I got there, here's a, a significant breadcrumb. Uh, I was working uh, on the military base. I'm a, a military brat, moved every two or three years of my life, except for high school, except for we moved in the middle of high school to Panama, not Panama City, Florida, Panama, the country. And I was working with a guy who would read his Bible every day, and I'd sit and ask him questions. And something very interesting happened one day. One of the older workers because I'm from the South, I learned to respect my elders. He was very mean to me. I mean, mean. Uh, my wife and my kids would tell you, I'm working on this stuff, so y'all pray for me, I got a temper. But you got to respect your elders. So I bit my lip, I said, boy, I knock you out, but it's a good thing I know to respect my elders. I went back in, and Sergeant High could not have seen this. Sergeant High said, you know, the Lord told me to tell him something. And he says, I, I just hope he comes back because I want to I want to really share it with him. And so the man came back and, and, and Sergeant High says, uh, you see me read this Bible every day. Yeah. And he says, you know, the Lord um, always talks to me. He says, but he said, the strangest thing, I just feel like I'm supposed to tell you that you need to treat the children here like you treat your children at home. I said, what? I said, I was going to knock this old man out. But it was a moment where God was showing me that he's still speaking, that, that we still can see him, we can still experience him because he got up and he, and he rose. Watch this now. And so that was, a, that was a, for instance, so I went into Briar, uh, uh, Briarcliff College in, in, in Sioux City and I remember all the classes, I, I got there late, so this one's full, this one's full. So I had to take a class called uh, uh, Faith and Meaning. When I tell y'all that was the best class I ever took, why? Because it was, a, it was a breadcrumb. I kept hearing God. I kept hearing God. But yet I did not know if I, if I was called to go in the ministry yet. Two years pass, and I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And in this, in this instant, in this moment, one night, I was so frustrated, I walked outside. And I walked past our chapel, and the chapel had a light in it. And I walked in there. 
And long story short, uh, I'm going to tie two breadcrumbs together. My grandfather had passed away that year. And at his, at his we call it home going, uh, the, 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 the pastor was Reverend Stanton. I'll never forget it. I want you to see the breadcrumb, even in the midst of the death of my grandfather, who was the closest thing to me. By the way, I'll throw this in parenthetically. Uh, he helped me pass every last theology class because whenever the, 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 the theology got deep and I call it thick and way out there, I would call him and say, Granddaddy, they're trying to teach us something like this. And he says, well, boy, I think this is it. And it'd be something simple with his third grade education. I'd come back and write my paper on it. Y'all know I got an A. But watch this. He died. And in the midst of that home going, Reverend Stanton, there's a there's a there's a there's a there's an African spirit, uh, spiritual called traveling shoes. And he said, if anyone wants to uh, fill Leslie's shoes, uh, uh, you got to have on your traveling shoes. And in the midst of that, somehow I got strength. And I said, granddaddy ain't gone. He might not be here, but I'm going to see him one day. And I got strength. It was a breadcrumb that the Lord was leaving. Uh, and so when I went to pray in that chapel, I had this sense that, 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 that God was with me and that God called me. I answered that call. And what I want you to hear is that these divine moments are ones, though, that you got to step aside and you got to let God speak to you. You got you, you, you to you, you do like they did at Emmaus. Come on and go a little further with me. Moses had to step aside when he saw the, 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 bur the burning bush. Isaiah, even in the midst of the dream, had to say, uh, 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 here I am, Lord. And if you'll do that in these divine moments, you may not realize that I was telling Ryan, it's a blessing to have to come to chapel. You, you may not realize it, but, but it will be a blessing to you later because you will see that in these instances, God left breadcrumbs that said that I'm after you, that I want to talk to you, that I want to be near and dear to you. Now watch this in closing. Because sometimes we don't realize how intimate God is and how much he knows us. Now, here's the thing. If you look at a tree and grass, the clouds and all, and God created all that. But the scripture says God knows the number of hairs on your head. Not to show you his strength and his might, but to show you how intimate he wants to be with you. Now, uh, and I'm going to try and do this one uh, quickly. When we pray or we step aside and we want time with God, you, Hear me, because, because sometimes we know that God is transcendent or he, he's far away, but, but sometimes you have to really realize how intimate uh, God is with you. Watch this. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to uh, tie this to Scripture again because we must. Uh, scripture says that uh, he was tempted with all, just as we were with all of the infirmities, yet without sin. He's not a high priest that doesn't understand what you go through. Watch this real quick in my time remaining. My father, uh, uh, Noah's grandfather, uh, it's probably one of the funniest guys you ever want to meet. I, I think I picked up storytelling from him because he likes to tell jokes. Yes, it's related. Uh, but anyway, uh, when he was a boy, my grandmother uh, used to cook big Sunday dinners, fried chicken. I told you we were from the South. And he, 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 he stole, y'all forgive him, he stole some chicken. Uh, and, and he was going out of the house and, you know, the old uh, screen door, and they slammed. He said he made sure that didn't do it. He said he made sure no one saw him. He went to what we call the wood edge, which means the ed edge of the woods. He ate the chicken and he came back in. And, and as soon as he got in the kitchen, his mother said, Tony, why would you eat that chicken? And he said he, he got ready to lie to her. And she said, as long as you black and you live in my house, you better not lie. And he called his sister. He said, sister. How'd you know I ate the chicken? I, 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 I did all of this uh, incognito stuff. I, I, I checked. There's no way you saw me. And she told him, look down. And when he looked down, he had a grease stain from the chicken in his pocket from here down to his knees. <laughs> now watch this. My father, though, translated that later on in life. I'm watching my time. I got three minutes. And, 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 and in the military, we, we, we would all uh, sit in my mom and dad's room upstairs, watch TV, and then they say, go to bed. You know, that's when you had bedtime, you don't drink after something. My dad said, go downstairs and get the picture of Kool-Aid. Man, at that age, Kool-Aid at that time when you couldn't have it. I said, oh, yeah. I went down and got the Kool-Aid, came up, brought the Dixie cups. Because I'm from the South, you got to have a Dixie cup. Gave everybody some. We drank it. My dad said, okay, take the picture downstairs. And I took the picture downstairs. I got out the room. I said, ooh, ooh, you know you're not supposed to drink out of the picture. Bit. And I looked back in the room. I said, boy, I don't want them to see me. So I went like this. And then we had stairs. Went down the stairs. And I called it the little, the little rest stop. I drank some more. And I said, ooh, maybe there, he's dead. Okay, not there. Went there. And I put it in there. I said, wait a minute now. I lost time with being so sneaky. And if I don't get back in a certain time, he's going to think I drank out of the picture. 
So I said, I got socks on so I can run because he won't be able to hear me run. So I ran up the first little dude and I said, wait a minute, if he sees me run, then he's going to say, why are you running? So I said, and then I ran up the rest and I got ready to go in the room, right? And I said, wait a minute, I just ran. So if I'm breathing hard, then my dad's going to know I'm breathing hard. Going to ask why I'm breathing hard. I had to have done something wrong. So what I did, I held my breath and walked into the room. And I sat down. My dad said, Tony, why'd you drink out of that pitcher? And I did the same thing. I got my mouth ready to lie. My dad said, as long as you're black in my house, you better not lie. And so I had to stand up. I said, Daddy, how in the world did you know I drank out of the pitcher? My dad says, you know, I was your age one time. And if I had to take a picture of my favorite Kool-Aid downstairs, I would have drank out of it too. So as long as you are growing and you are maturing, don't you ever forget there are things you're going to think about, things that you want to do. That before you even want to do it, I'm going to know you want to do them because I've lived that life. I came by to tell you that's Jesus. Don't ever think that he doesn't understand, that he doesn't, that he doesn't know. You got to give him the moment. You got to give him everything that is happening. Don't ever think he doesn't understand the circumstance, the situation, whether it's good or whether it's bad. He lived the life so he could say to us, as long as you live it and you're in my house, just tell the truth. It's been my pleasure to share the gospel with you, which is Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Don't let anybody ever let you miss these divine moments. Step aside and say, here I am, and I am here, Lord. Amen. And amen. Now, I don't know how y'all normally uh, end, but if you'll stand, I'd like to pray with you. We have one minute. Am I correct, uh, Ryan? If you will, however you pray, I, I'm, I, I tend to lift my hands, but you do whatever you're comfortable with. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word that has gone forth. Let it find fertile ground and produce right now a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Give all of us, Lord, eyes to see, ears to hear, minds that are transformed, hearts that are ready to receive, and then hands and feet that will put flesh on the gospel. Lord, every time that we see these breadcrumbs, we realize that you are leading us into a deeper relationship with you. We thank you, and we will say, here I am, I am here, Lord. And we'll let you do the speaking, we'll do the listening. We'll speak sometimes, Lord, and listen for your response. We thank you for this place, this gathering of people at Tabor College, Lord, that is decidedly Christian, that they might cause these moments where we can step aside and have great experiences with you. Never will we be the same, but we appreciate it, Lord, for this mountaintop experience in our everyday lives, in ordinary ways, Lord. You touch us and keep us. We bless your name and we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray it all. Amen? Amen. Amen.